वेलकम टू द प्रोग्राम ऑन सेंट्रीफ्यूगल कंप्रेशन इन दिस सेक्शन वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द वर्किंग प्रिंसिपल टाइप्स कंपोनेंट्स ग्लैंड सीलिंग लुब्रिकेशन सिस्टम पर्जिंग इंटरकूलर सर्ज कंट्रोल फ्लो कंट्रोल एंड परफॉर्मेंस का let us see what happens when the gas is compressed <coughs> gas is compressed as per the coe's law which says pv is equal to rt it means that pressure <coughs> into temperature is equal to r into the temperature r is inverse inversal gas compression keeping the compressor law is mind when the air is compressed the pressure and temperature of the gas increases as the volume of the space containing the air reduces it is called adiabatic compression now let us see <coughs> what happens in centrifugal compressor centrifugal compressor is a <coughs> in in centrifugal compressor mechanical action of rotating vanes imparts velocity to the gas which is converted into pressure in diffusion in multi stage and volute casing in single stage and there are two type of <coughs> centrifugal compressors radial flow and axial flow now if we see on the right hand side in emission you see this is the impeller and the gas is entering from the center and then going out at the tip of the impeller so this is the center gas is entering here coming out here this is the volute casing where the <coughs> diameter area is increasing so the tip is generating a high velocity which is part of it is getting converted into <coughs> pressure by reducing the volume at the bottom you can see this is the impeller this is the volute casing this is the inlet and this is the outlet now if we talk about the basic parts of the centrifugal compressor this is impeller vein volute suction i discharge line diffuser dive form seal shaft casing bearing both radial and thrust and there are two terms we use suction vane tip that is part of the impeller vane that comes in contact with the gas first when the gas enters the compressor and discharge vane tip this is the part of the impeller vane that comes in contact with the gas when gas leaves at the last the impeller <coughs> here we are able to see on left hand side photograph of a horizontally split compressor how it means the joint is in horizontal section this is the housing this is the rotor this is the impeller gas is entering from here and velocity is in gas is coming out now radially that is perpendicular the shaft in, and this is the diffuser it is entering the diffuser diffuser turns is increasing <coughs> the pressure of the gas by reducing the volume it is also serving a purpose as a guide to direct the gas to the inlet of the dex impeller here on the right hand side top you can see the gas is leaving from diffuser here and then it is taking u turn and then it is entering at the eye of the next stage impeller on the bottom left you can see <coughs> the compressor this is the vane <coughs> this is the rotor which is rotating and if we talk about various components this is the casing this is your rotor <coughs> the rotor shaft these are the impellers this is the thrust bearing <coughs> this is dive form this is your balance drum there are bearings on both sides and then there is a coupling <coughs> now there are two type of Uh, compressors <coughs> horizontally split and vertically split what we see on the left hand side is the horizontal split compressor it means <coughs> that the joint is here you can see the joints are here these are the impeller this is the casing horizontally split casing is used for <coughs> for a low 
pressure application up to 40 bar and right hand side we see the vertical split ballast compressor you see in this the joints are all joints are in vertically they are assembled and then pushed into the barrel barrel compressor can operate up to 800 bar <coughs> now <coughs> so first everything is assembled in vertical compressor and then it is pushed inside the <coughs> barrel in <coughs> here we are able to see the different <coughs> components of a vertically split compressor this is your rotor shaft this is your rotor shaft these are the blades this is your diffuser <coughs> if we now start from this is your coupling this is radial bearing this is the shaft seal this is the balance drum <coughs> again this is the shaft seal this is the radial bearing and this is the thrust bearing the this is the suction and this is discharge of the compression <clears throat> now let us see the function of various components of the compression <clears throat> the shaft is a, a steep section usually made of high nickel chrome and molybdenum material it is machined and impellers and spacers are mounted on the central part bearing and seals are mounted on both the ends impeller is actually the main rotating element of the compressor which adds velocity to the gas the shape size of the impeller affect the head and flow characteristics of the impeller diaphragm is the stationary in <coughs> element inside the casing it includes the diffuser for the gas as it leaves the impeller and a channel to redirect the gas through uh, to return the passageway into the next stage of impeller as i explained in the previous page drawing now <coughs> let us see the rotor of a centrifugal compressor so <coughs> this is your shaft this is your shaft this is the coupling the general bearing comes here <clears throat> the shaft seal is here this is the balancing drum this is impeller seal these are all your impellers and there is a <clears throat> impe each impeller has got a spacer to accommodate the diffuser so these are the spacers and this is the interstage sliver in sealing so that the gas don't leak from the <clears throat> discharge of the stage to the suction of the <clears throat> then <clears throat> there are shaft seals <clears throat> so uh, they are on both the end of the shaft and as well as between the casing and to minimize the leakage of the process gas and <clears throat> these are used and they are used to prevent the air or vapors also <clears throat> entering inside the gas the purpose of the balance drum is to balance the axial thrust because the discharge pressure is higher and suction pressure is low so that it this differential pressure tries to push the compressor towards the suction and it balances that coupling is used to drive connect the compressor to the motor or other driving machine <clears throat> now let us see the various bearings in the compressor so what we see here is the radial bearing and this is a tilting pad bearing these are the tilting pad bearing these are the two halves of the bearing and the tilt <coughs> up to this is the complete assembly of the bearing two views are there here this is the side view this is the front view and you can see both of <coughs> them here <coughs> now this is the thrust bearing here thrust bearing is used to restrict the radial movement of the shaft thrust collar so thrust bearing has got thrust pad on both the sides and there is a thrust collar and a vial is filled in between that and <clears throat> so when the shaft tries to move on the any side the vial inside that it pressurized and it don't allow the <clears throat> collar to move and that's how it restricts the movement of the shaft and that's how the axial movement is prevented if what you see on the top right is this is the holder for all the pads tilting pads and 
here if you see here <coughs> left bottom this is your this is your thrust to this is our tilting pad and this is your thrust collar and this is the complete assembly this is called equalizing pad this is called carrier ring and after that actually you have this is are these are the thrust pads this is the thrust collar similar arrangement on the right hand side also now we will talk about the <coughs> integrally geared compressor this compressor is a multi shaft machine designed for a very high flow and high pressure up to eight impeller stages so what happens here you see there are so many <coughs> so many impellers mounted on different shafts and then there is a bull gear in the center which rotates this is the first stage this is the second this is the third like that so you can see here the gas is entering going out then it passes actually through the intercooler goes to the next stage and in the center if we see this is the bull gear which rotates all the impellers at different stage higher stage impeller rotates at much high speed than the first stage <coughs> impel and always there is a intercooling between the, the these impellers this has got a capacity up to 4 lakh meter cube per hour <coughs> now here we see a drawing of the complete setup <coughs> so there by what is happening is that there is a bull gear here there is a and that this is the this is the central gear here and then on the bull gear there are so many shaft rotating at different this is the inlet one the gas is compressed the first stage goes to the intercooler comes out then goes again to the next stage goes to the intercooler third fourth stage like that it is going and <clears throat> this is base stem this is the lubricant angle system this is the motor and then the coupling is here <clears throat> so this feature allows for a very high volume flow and <clears throat> it is very energy efficient even at the power flow <clears throat> now let us talk about how the thrust gets balanced in a compressor first is why it is required we know that the pressure on discharge side is much higher on the suction side and on each stage each stage say in the first stage the on the downstream of the impeller there is a pressure of p1 but and suction p2 there is a difference like that on discharge stage finally uh, again there is a <clears throat> discharge pressure acting on the reverse side so actually a thrust which is which is get unbalanced is equal to discharge thrust caused by the discharge pressure minus suction pressure which we need to balance so how it gets balanced this is the balance drum this is the balance drum on discharge end of the compressor so on this side of the balance drum the discharge pressure is acting and there is a annular space here through which the gas is leaking on the right hand side <clears throat> what is acting is the suction pressure and it is piped back to the suction line so the suction pressure remains here and it is balancing the thrust caused by the difference between the suction and discharge pressure <clears throat> now let us talk about the axial flow compressor so axial flow compressor is a rotating air foil based compressor in which the stage gas or working fluid is principally flows through parallel to the axis of the rotation and that's why it is called axial flow compressor the velocity of fluid increases as it flows through the compressor due action of the rotor blade which exert a torque on the fluid the stationary blade slows down the fluid converting the circumferential component of the flow into pressure axial flow compressors can have very high stage so on left hand side you can see the gas is entering from here and moving axially and then going out on the right bottom you can see you see these are the moving blades so gas is <coughs> getting compressed velocity is being increased by the moving blade in stationary blade it is 
getting con partly converted into pressure it is also guiding the gas to angle which is parallel to the inter of the uh, rotating blade <clears throat> so all gas turbines are actually <clears throat> using axial flow compression <clears throat> and i am going to show you <clears throat> i am going to now show you a video on axial compression <clears throat> the inlet casing provides a smooth transition <laughs> flow of air from the filters through the silencers and into the axial compressor. The inlet casing also provides access to the thrust bearing and the inlet journal bearing. Variable inlet guide vanes are located in the inlet casing directly in front of the first row of compressor blades. The vanes are used to regulate the amount of air entering the compressor. The circular operating ring actuates the guide vanes so that all vanes move in unison when opening. or closing. Before each set of rotating blades is a set of stationary blades or blade rings that direct the air to the next set of rotating blades. The compressor blade rings have stationary airfoil shaped vanes that direct the air to and from the rotating compressor blades. Now we will talk about the intercooling arrangement. For all the large or middle size compressors, intercooling is one of the most important ways to save the energy in using in multi-stage compressors. So, you see what happens in intercooling. For in the first one stage, we are compressing the gas fuel stage, then we are passing it through the intercooler and then it is going to the next stage. Now, in intercooler, what we are doing, we are practically <coughs> reducing we are practically <coughs> reducing the temperature of the gas so the volume is also getting reduced and that's why the next stage takes less power <coughs> and so the intercooling <coughs> because it is reducing the voltage it is the power consumption and it improves the efficiency of the compression now we are going to talk about the lubricating system of the compressor on the right hand side you are able to see a drawing where you are able to see three pumps you are able to see the lube oil <coughs> you are able to see the lube oil coolers and oil tanks <coughs> and all these things so it mainly contain, contains of a oil tank there will be three electrical driven pump one on the ac mains other on the AC mains but on emergency, third is on DC power <clears throat> and all with the auto starts. There are two wild coolers with changeover facility online. <clears throat> there are two wild filters with change over facility online. There is a pressure regulator where we can adjust the wild pressure. There is a wild tank vapor extraction pan to extract the vapor, wild vapor from the tank there is a <coughs> high differential filter pressure alarm so that you can change the filter when your filter get chopped and there is a high low well temperature alarm there are certain alarms and trip also that is high bearing temperature high bearing vibration and low while pressure <coughs> now <coughs> we will be talking about the surge. But before that, let us see a compressor curve. What happens in a radial flow compressor when, <clears throat> when you go on increasing the flow, the pressure goes on reducing. Horizontal is flow, vertical is pressure. <clears throat> now, a time comes, a, a time comes where the flow will not increase even if you reduce the pressure and it is called a stone wall. So first let us see what is stone wall and we will be discussing surge further. So a stone wall also called a choked flow. 
occurs in a centrifugal compressor when the velocity of gas in the inlet at least one stage is reaching the speed of the sound that is Mach 1 at the gas conditions in part of the machine. Then at that time flow through the compressor will not increase even after reducing the discharge <coughs> pressure that is called a stone wall and surge is a condition where the <coughs> where if the pressure increases too much and flow is less the that high pressure will not allow the compressor flow to take place and that's how surge takes place we are going to discuss this in detail in the in next slides now flow can be controlled by inlet guide vent or it can be controlled by speed variation by lowering the speed <coughs> it is economical method but it should discharge pressure also so it may not be always acceptable like see here on the top when we are reducing the speed the pressure is also reducing so most of the modern machines are using combination of both flow control and speed <coughs> variation now let us see what is surge surge is an unstable operating condition that can cause surge damage to industrial systems most compressors have a stability limit that is defined by the minimum flow rate on a pressure rise versus flow rate characteristic curve surge ma so <coughs> So surge margins actually surge is a condition hmm, where it don't allow the so what happens when the surge takes place it don't allow the pressure the flow to of compression to pass through that when the flow is less so surge margin is referred to the margin of safety between the normal operating point of the compression and stability limit all these we are going to see next graph axial flow compressors are more vulnerable for surge and change in gas consumption uh, specific gravity always affects the surge point so <clears throat> so what happens is as the system continues to use less gas the head required to maintain the flow will increase and when the flow increases always <coughs> there is a chance of back flow at the surge point <coughs> so <coughs> this is this is the point where surge occurs and if you see when you reduce the pressure it surge occurs at much <coughs> lesser flow so <coughs> now if the system continues to use the less gas the pressure of the system again increases and the flow stops and the gas may flow from the system to the compressor and then it may damage the compression <clears throat> so for that each machine has got a surge protection surge control system so let us i am going to explain to you with this graph so this side is pressure and this side is flow now what happens the comp when the flow reaches at this point the compressor will surge at this speed but <clears throat> so now what we do we never allow this point to come so we add some margin and after that margin we plot a curve this curve and this curve is called surge control line so whenever <clears throat> whenever flow reduces up to this point <clears throat> there will be alarm and we need either to reduce the discharge pressure or increase the compressor flow but <clears throat> for safe conditions and to operate the compressors continuously we add a bit more margin and we draw a surge control line and when the condition comes here the pressure comes up to this point at this flow what will happen the surge control valve will open that we are going to see next so see how let us see how we control the valve so this is a anti surge valve this is what is it is doing this is your compressor suction this is your compressor discharge and this valve is diverting the gas from the compressor discharge to compressor flow and by that it is increasing the 
flow through the compressor and saving the compressor from the surge and so we are measuring the pressure also and temperature also and based on that this control valve is operating. <coughs> now let us talk about purging of the gas compressor. So purging the toxic or inflammable gas <coughs> the compressor of the it is very essential to prevent the gas from entering the environment causing toxic or fire hazards. So what we are using is displacement purging with nitrogen gas we are mostly using and before handing over a gas compressor for maintenance to ensure the process gas is fully disturbed by the nitrogen to avoid inflammation or explosion. So what we are doing for before giving the maintenance we are filling the nitrogen in the compressor handing over to maintenance and before starting after the maintenance to ensure that nit the air is totally replaced by nitrogen <clears throat> and after that we again fill the gas and replace the nitrogen by the gas. So <clears throat> thank you very much for your patience hearing. I have released so many videos on steam turbines and pumps on YouTube and all those links are given here and I am also going to release <clears throat> a in near future two more videos one on rotary compressor another around centrifugal compressors <clears throat> so if you have gained something from this please please like on the youtube link and please sponsor <clears throat> this thank you very much <clears throat>